This series of videos is about an interesting but neglected technology invented by Philo T. Farnsworth in the 1950s. It is a technology for creating power from nuclear fusion and it's called the Farnsworth Fuser. If it were possible to get this technology to work, then it would have the potential to solve many of the world's energy problems. Nuclear fusion is what powers the sun. At the sun's heart, at immense temperature and pressure, the nuclei of hydrogen atoms, which are just protons, are squashed together and fuse or join to become helium. In doing this, they release energy because the particles generated by reaction carry energy away with them. The origin of this energy is that the generated helium has a lower energy than the original individual hydrogen ions. This is the first of several similar reactions inside the Sun which make other isotopes of helium and in heavier stars can also make carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. The released energy is what makes the stars and the Sun shine. Since we first understood this process, it has been a dream to reproduce it here on Earth and to produce vast energies in a similar way to the Sun. Attempts to do this have been going on practically since the early part of the 20th century and especially since the 1920s. There have been two main contenders in this race. The first one is called magnetic confinement and depends on huge machines costing billions of pounds, which heat the gas up to immense temperatures, in which state it sheds its electrons and becomes ionized. This is called a plasma. This plasma is then heated by injecting electromagnetic radiation into it or running massive currents through it or by other means. The superheated plasma is contained and confined by magnets to try and keep it compressed enough for a substantial amount of nuclear reactions to take place. The second method is called inertial confinement and this takes a small bubble of gas and superheats it with massive lasers so that again reactions can take place. Both these techniques depend on extreme heating to produce their results. Farnsworth pointed out that there was a different way that, in theory, it's possible to electrically accelerate ions until they reach a high enough speed to collide with others and for fusion to occur. This was a completely different way of looking at the problem, one that did away with the need for ultra-high temperatures altogether. And Farnsworth called this machine a fuser. In the next few videos, we'll explore the theory behind this and look at its possibilities and limitations. Although the system has never proved successful in producing endless energy, that was its promise, neither have any of its competitors. But they have billions of pounds thrown at them, whereas Farnsworth's idea is a province of only a few dedicated researchers and enthusiasts.